Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Fridays with Vico webinar series. It's so wonderful to see so many people here and from around the world. I see New Zealand on the line, and I also see as far away as Kenya. So hello, everyone. We do have a large crowd today, so with over 100 people logged in, we just ask that you please mute your phone lines or your VoIP microphone out of courtesy for the group. Let's just start with introductions and the game plan for today's webinar. My name is Holly Allison, and I'll be serving as the moderator for today's event from Vico's Boston office. Joining us from Denver, Colorado today is Tai Nguyen. He was the project engineer from Hensel Phelps who led the team on the Denver Justice Center. Out in Sacramento, California is Casey Marshall, one of our newest business development leaders, but many of you already know him as your trainer. We're celebrating his promotion by adding him to our expert panel for questions and answers. For those of you who might be new to a Fridays with Vico, we try to make these sessions as educational and relaxed as possible. We understand that your time is precious, so we like getting right to the questions and answers. We do have two hours blocked off for today's presentation, but today's presentation will run about an hour, and then it really depends on the Q&A portion of the agenda. Speaking of the Q&A session, during the presentation, feel free to write down your questions. Just write them down in the questions module of your control panel on the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar screen. Type in your questions, and we'll address them at the end of the session. Let's get started with the presentation. I'm just going to hand the control over to Ty in Colorado and let him kick this off. Here you go, Ty. I'm making you the presenter now. Whenever you're ready, just show us your screen and take it away. Great. Thank you, Holly. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ty Wynn, and I will be presenting a, a BIM experience here at the Denver Justice Center on behalf of the uh, hardworking crew of uh, Hensel Phelps at, uh, at the DJC. Um, back in March of 2007, we were tasked at the job site to research and integrate BIM into operations as a useful tool. Uh, this presentation will outline our experiences in this process. Hensel Phelps is uh, consistently ranked amongst the top 25 of the general contractors and construction managers in the nation by ENR. Our company started in 1937, and it is an employee-owned company based out of Greenland, Colorado. We have approximately 2,400 employees spread over eight districts, anywhere from the Mid-Atlantic and Capital Districts to our Northern and Southern California Districts. And that's just a, a little brief history on Hensel Phelps Construction Company. Um, and right into the presentation, uh, the first slide kind of um, shows BIM costs. Uh, the GMP on this job was uh, $286 million. And uh, project savings utilizing BIM. Um, again, we we're trying to define these metrics. And, and you know, it's hard to come up with an equation that's actually, um, you know, the, uh, gives you a, a, an answer for uh, cost avoidance as well as uh, better communication. So, you know, again, with this project, uh, hopefully by the end we'll have a better idea and uh, a more defined metric in terms of defining cost savings on this job. Just uh, some quick uh, overviews on the features of both the courthouse and the detention center. Uh, first, the courthouse features uh, includes 320,000 square feet of building area, five floors plus basements, a five-story canted curtain wall system, 35 courtrooms, 29 finished, and six for the future, a public plaza, the underground parking garage for the judges, efficient public transportation access, exterior and interior limestone and granite finishes, and uh, also high-end millwork in the courtrooms. The detention center features include uh, 460,000 square foot of building area, five floors plus basements, 24 housing units, approximately 64 beds per unit, enclosed vehicle sally ports, exterior recreation yards shielded from public view, exterior limestone enclosure, underground tunnel connecting detention facility and courthouse to allow for efficient detainee processing. And I'm going to give a quick BIM overview and again a lot of these um, uh, 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D um, outlines uh, just it sometimes it gets confusing. I constantly have to go back, you know, to the slide once a month just to remind myself what is 2D, 3D, 4D, 5D. Uh, 2D is a plan view up for uh, paper documents. The third dimension is for virtual models. The fourth dimension is time or scheduling. And the fifth dimension is cost or estimating. As many of you out there are probably aware, there's many software options out there. There's Revit, Bentley, uh, Vico, um, Arthur Cat for the, uh, the engine. 
And uh, at the Justice Center, you know, at that point in time that we were starting this project, we uh, decided to go with Vitro because they had the best solution at that time for what we do or uh, where we wanted to go with the, uh, the BIM process. Now, within this Vitro suite is Constructor, which is their 3D tool, uh, Control, which is their 4D, 5D is the estimator tool, and then Presenter, uh, which gave us amazing graphics and uh, sequencing. One of the, uh, you know, an endeavor that uh, we're starting to really realize how powerful it is is the procurement side. We're starting to see it more and more under uh, uh, BIM as a RFP requirement. So BIM is uh, quickly becoming a, uh, a deliverable for a lot of our projects. And part of this is uh, the visualization and communication tool. Uh, as we're going into procurement, we're you know realizing that it's a the extremely powerful tool to to get into with show the owners exactly how we're going to uh, keep us out our work. Another arm of them is estimating as well as scheduling. Uh, we also looked into both of these um, assets of them and um, kind of got our heads in there and uh, tried to understand how it could be useful for us at the operations level. Uh, the first was estimating. And, you know, to go down this road, we realized that we first needed the model to create an estimate. That's kind of like the basis for everything that we do. And the next was recipes uh, that we needed to take to extract the cost and production kind of. With uh, using estimating, we streamlined our quantification. Uh, we were able to actually utilize the visual tool to, as a really powerful feature to, to really showcase what we're actually estimating. Uh, and it really helped to validate our, our concrete numbers. From the model, we were able to generate quantities for all the concrete uh, and using estimator, it uh, really produced some really amazing reports for us. Now, this next slide shows how we actually integrated, again, with uh, estimator and constructor to actually pull the quantities from the model um, to tie with our estimates. So, you know, in a line item on the estimate, you can actually click, let's say here it's showing some slabs, you can click on that slab line item in the estimate. And we visually show that in the model. Uh, this was an extremely powerful tool as we were able to show the owners exactly what they're paying for. And again, this is an extremely public project, so um, some of the owners were, you know, they're not completely construction savvy. So looking at the estimate, sometimes it was hard for them to really see what that um, line item actually meant. So by actually utilizing this tool, we were able to show them exactly um, in the model what that line item was um, estimating. Again, here's another report that was generated from uh, this process, and you know, part of this report was a kind of, you know, facing standards like um, our uniformat structure here, where we utilize the um, uniformat code to actually label our layers. So, with our layer convention, um, like here it says A1010 standard foundation, that was our layer name for our gray beam. And here's another 2D snapshot of that uh, same gray beam where we're actually you know, showing it in the 2D uh, frame of reference. And here is a three-dimensional snapshot of that, uh, those exact gray beams as well. And also down to the quantities that were um, pulled from the model that can give us what we needed as far as the quantity data. So going through this process, we um, quickly realized that it was really hard to use other firms' models. I mean, one thing is, you know, for us to um, shorten that transition from the design intent to an actually an assembly model where we can actually build from it. But uh, beyond that, actually to try to get a design firm to model the way we estimate, estimate uh, very difficult and it's almost impossible. So um, in this process, we soon realized we needed to create some standards. Uh, we did some layer studies where, again, we would, you know, we decided to use the uniform S structure as our layering main convention. And then, uh, you know, just moving on and just creating these standards all over the country where every model that we would have made uh, would follow these, uh, these protocols. Here is just a, a quick shot of a, a slab that we, again, use the A1030 uniform S to label as our layer. 